Hello and welcome to the Anglepreneurs. Today we're going to be exploring the iconic Boundary Estate in Shoreditch. The estate, constructed from 1890, was one of the earliest social housing schemes built by a local government authority in the UK. The estate was built on the site of the demolished Friars Milk Rookery and we'll explain a little more about that and the tourist area. So what is a rookery? A rookery in the colloquial English of the 18th and 19th century was a city slum occupied by poor people and frequently also by criminals and prostitutes. It's a term used quite frequently by some London social commentators when describing certain parts of our wonderful city. I dropped in a picture of the old nickel slum. It was on this site that the Boundary Estate was built. It's hard to think that just over a hundred years ago that people lived in these conditions. And I do believe that certain politicians wouldn't mind if people went back to living like this. And beware, this is the kind of Britain that people like Jacob rees would like if they had their way and even more power than they have now. So beware, the architects of this misery, they're out there. As is pretty evident from that picture, such areas were overcrowded with low quality housing and little or no sanitation. Soil from the foundations of building the Boundary Estate in or from 1980 was used to construct a mound in the middle called Arnold Circus and it's at the centre of the development and is surmounted by a bandstand. On this vlog we'll be walking around the estate and we'll be also walking around the kind of circus. The estate consists of multi-storey brick tenements radiating from the central circus each of which bears the name of a town or village along the non-tidal reaches of the River Thames. We're walking around again in some poor weather. It's not quite as bad as last Saturday when we walked around the waterfront at Ipswich, but it's another grey and dismal day with rain in the air. But my heart is full of joy at seeing this wonderful example of local authority housing. It really is a masterpiece. Where did these slums start? Well, in 1680, John Nicholl of Gray's Inn, who had built seven houses here, leased nearly five acres of gardens for 180 years to a London mason, John Richardson, with permission to dig for bricks. The great and wonderful and sadly underappreciated social commentator Henry Mayhew visited Bethnal Green in 1850 and noted for the Morning Chronicle the trades in the area. Tailors, costermongers, shoemakers, dustmen, sawyers, carpenters, cabinet makers and silk weavers. Mayhew went on to comment that roads were unmade often mid alleys, houses small and without foundations, subdivided and often around unpaved courts. Also he mentioned that an almost total lack of drainage and sewage was made worse by the ponds formed by the excavating of brick earth for the brickworks.
Mayhew concludes for this part that pigs and cows in backyards, noxious trades like boiling tripe, melting tallow or preparing cat's meat in slaughterhouses, dust heaps and lakes of putrefying night soil added to the filth. So you get a good idea of what the old nickel slum would have looked like and how desperate this area would have been before 1890. And we'll look into, as we go further into the vlog, the campaigns that were underway and that eventually were able to clear this awful area and construct what we see before us today. What I love about this area is it's not just its recent proud history, but is the, the real love that people in this area have for this development and the area. We're now up on Arnold Circus, so this will be a, a circular route for a few moments, a few minutes, and we'll be able to get not just a great view of the circus, but also the surrounding houses on the boundary estate radiating from this central point. It's a brilliant bit of architecture and to me, the circus here just really unites all the surrounding area. The whole place is a masterpiece and it's really one of the great projects of London and something we should all be proud of. And this really shows you what local authority housing can be about. This isn't the soulless, uninhabited um, luxury flats that we get on the South Bank today. This is something far greater. A bit more history about the background. The Vicar of St. Philip's, the church serving the old nickel, quoted by Frederick Engels, the great communist, stated that in 1844, the conditions were far worse than in a northern industrial parish that population density was 8.6 people to a small house and that there were 1,400 houses in an area less than 400 square yards. One of the great architects, perhaps the great hero of this campaign to get rid of this awful slum was the Reverend Osborne Jay of Holy Trinity. And the great Charles Booth, social campaigner and architect of the famous poverty maps, already noted that this area was extremely poor. There is a local group here that do a lot of work in Arnold Circus, in and around the circus, to keep it looking so pristine. So for a few moments, let's just enjoy the beauty of this area. In 1896, a novel was published called The Child of the Jago by Arthur Morrison and is set in a fictionalised version of Old Nickel. Now, Arthur Morrison was persuaded to come to this area by the Reverend Osborne Jay and this was really the energy behind the novel. The death rate in the Old Nickel rookery was twice that of the rest of Bethnal Green, 
not an area known for its longevity, and four times that of London. One child in four died before his or her first birthday. When I was walking up to um, the circus today, Arnold Circus Boundary Estate from uh, Fenchurch Avenue, where I work, I must have walked over about 15 to 20 homeless people. So let's just be aware that um, the problems of deprivation have never really gone away. And we've got a government at the moment that aren't going to make the situation any better. In fact, they're going to make it a whole lot worse. I dropped in a picture from 1895 and this is how the area looked when the old rookery, the old slum of Old Nickel had been taken down and the building of the Boundary Estate was underway. And this is a picture some eight years later in 1903 of the construction of Arnold Circus. And this is a picture of the grandstand on a nice sunny day, which is something we don't have at the moment. The architect Owen Fleming was behind the Boundary Street scheme for the Boundary Estate and he raised the area retaining only Boundary Street in the west and Mount Street in the east. Part of Owen Fleming's design was to widen many streets so you had these wide tree-lined streets radiating from Arnold Circus. In all, the LCC architects designed 21 of the 23 blocks with Ronan Plum designing the other two. And they contained between 10 and 85 tenements in each with a total of 1,069 tenements and accommodating just over 5,500 people. The estate also included a laundry 18 shops and 77 workshops. Churches and schools were preserved. Impresarios and brothers Lugrade and Bernard Dauphin moved to the Boundary Estate in 1914 from nearby Brick Lane and attended the famous Rochelle Street School. Judging who deserved the tenement in the new builds and who should be banished to some other slum was deemed by some to be cruel and an arbitrary process. And one of the sad things of this development that it just moved the problems of poverty, deprivation and living in slums to another area and areas such as Dalston became particularly affected as people moved were moved out from this area to those other areas of London. And according to the Londonists, and I'm quoting from them, the Victorians were capable of blurring poverty and immorality even more than our own tabloid era of benefit sheets and sink estates. And a big thanks to the London Metropolitan Archives for some of the pictures in this blog. They really are a wonderful source for, um, for use when 
making a vlog on London. So I'll soon finish my narrative on the vlog and allow you about five, six minutes a piece from my voice. And I'm just going to dwell on the happy and kind of miserable feeling I have when coming around here. And that sounds weird. I'm very uplifted by the development itself and the massive improvements it made to the area and to people's lives, but also reflecting on the misery that must have been here for centuries before 1890. But even with those conflicting emotions, I'm still left inspired by the work of local authorities and social campaigners that worked really hard in order to make people's lives better. <laughs>